Steam engines are supposed to be old and weak, right? But the ones on this list were on another level. Engines with 300 PSI boilers, 6-foot-long pistons, and horsepower figures that embarrassed early diesels. These weren't gentle locomotives. These were giants of steel, fast, violent, and powerful enough to pull a small town. Here are the 10 most powerful steam engines ever built. Number 10. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Aspinall Goods Engines Back in the late 1800s, Northern England was the factory floor of the world. And while people remember the mills, the chimneys, and the noise, they often forget the machines that fed all of it. That job fell to locomotives like the Lancashire and Yorkshire Aspinall Goods Engines. These weren't glamorous showpieces. They were practical, almost humble in appearance, short wheelbases, compact boilers, and a design that looked simple until you realized how cleverly it was built. The Aspinall engines were designed to grip slippery rails, crawl up brutal gradients, and handle uneven tracks that would make larger engines struggle. One of their biggest strengths was balance. They were light enough to work on older branch lines, but strong enough to pull serious loads. Their inside cylinder arrangement made them stable and predictable, and crews loved how quickly they built steam. Firemen said they were easy breathers, locomotives that didn't choke or stall when working hard. Engine drivers remembered their sound too, a tight, sharp exhaust beat that echoed through mill towns every morning. They weren't fancy or powerful in the modern sense, but they were dependable, loyal machines that showed up every day for decades, quietly hauling the weight of an entire country's industry on their steel shoulders. Engines like the Aspinalls didn't just keep trains running, they kept a whole era alive. Number 9. The Corliss Station Engines The Corliss design changed steam forever. Better valves, smoother motion, higher efficiency. It didn't just make engines stronger, it made them smart. They used less fuel, ran cooler, and could power more machines without shaking themselves apart. Some Corliss engines hit 3,000 to 5,000 horsepower, driving everything, steel mills, shipyards, machine shops, and printing presses. There's a famous one, the Centennial Engine, so large it powered the entire 1876 World's Fair in Philadelphia. One engine, running an entire expo. This was the moment when people realized steam wasn't just about movement, it was about power, on a level no one had seen before. Number 8. The Pennsylvania Railroad K4S America needed passenger engines that didn't quit, and the PRR K4S was exactly that. A 462 powerhouse that could sprint at over 160 kilometers per hour while pulling long, heavy trains across the busy Northeast Corridor. These weren't light commuter runs. These were full express services with tight schedules, rough weather, and tracks that demanded absolute consistency. The K4S delivered every single day. It was so dependable that the PRR built 425 of them, more than any other passenger Pacific in U.S. history. Crews said the K4 had a certain confidence to it, steady on curves, strong on grades, and quick to respond when you opened the throttle. Inside the cab, it wasn't peaceful. It was hot, loud, and packed with moving parts. But enginemen trusted these locomotives with their lives because a K4 almost never failed. Firemen said it steamed willingly. Drivers said it rode like it was on rails even at high speeds. And passengers? They simply arrived on time, because the K-4 made sure of it. But America wasn't done. Because while these engines were fast and elegant, another railroad wanted something far more extreme. Something built not for speed, but for mountain-crushing power. Which one? Let's see. Number 7. The USATCS. 160. War Locomotive. During World War II, the Allies needed locomotives, thousands of them. So the U.S. mass-produced the S-160. Not pretty. Not comfortable. But incredibly tough, producing around 1,600 horsepower while hauling heavy military trains in the worst possible conditions. These engines ran in the U.K., Italy, Africa, India, even China, anywhere tracks survived bombing. They weren't built to last 50 years, but many did. Some still run today. That reliability is why railway historians say these machines helped win the war. Number 6. The Pennsylvania Railroad Steam didn't just fade away, it pushed back with everything it had. And nothing showed that better than the PRRQ-2, 
a 4464 duplex so extreme, no other railroad dared copy it. On test, it hit over 7,000 horsepower, the highest steam output ever recorded in North America. This wasn't just strong, this was insane. The Q2 could outpull early diesels, accelerate like a passenger engine, and drag mile-long freights without breaking a sweat. Its only real problem was timing. Diesels were taking over, and maintaining a machine this powerful was expensive. So the Q2 became one of Steam's greatest achievements and one of its shortest-lived giants. But trains weren't done yet, because while factories and ships were pushing limits, American railroads were about to build steam engines so big that people could feel them coming before they could see them. Which ones? You're about to see. Number 5. The Great Western Railway, King Class Back on the railways, the King Class was one of the stars of the UK. These locomotives weren't just quick, they had real strength, with around 3,300 horsepower to pull heavy trains over steep routes. Engineers who drove them often said the Kings felt smooth and easy to control, almost like the train was working with you instead of against you. But things were different in the US. American railroads wanted something bigger, heavier, and far more powerful, and they were about to build locomotives that made the Kings look small. Number 4. The Norfolk and Western Class J. The Class J locomotives were pure muscle, bullet-shaped nose, 70-inch drive wheels, 5,000 horsepower, and speeds over 180 kilometers per hour. Pulling passenger trains at that speed wasn't normal. It was madness. Passengers wrote in newspapers that the trains felt like flying, silent, smooth, unstoppable. One Class J even set a speed record so high the company tried to cover it up, afraid regulators would shut it down for being too fast to be safe. Number 3. The Chesapeake and Ohio Allegheny Now we're getting huge. The Allegheny wasn't a locomotive. It was a land battleship, over 7,000 horsepower, weighing more than a Boeing 747, built to drag mountains of coal over the Appalachian tracks. When an Allegheny locomotive got going, it wasn't subtle. The whole area felt it. People who lived near the tracks said their cupboards and picture frames would rattle a little when one went by. Even from far away, you could hear that deep, heavy sound coming long before the train showed up. The Allegheny wasn't built for speed or looks. It was built to move huge loads over mountain grades. Coal, steel, freight, whatever you hooked behind it, it just kept pulling. There was nothing gentle about it, but that was the point. It did a job most locomotives couldn't handle, and it didn't complain number two, the Union Pacific Big Boy. The Union Pacific Big Boy is still the largest steam locomotive to ever run on a railroad. It made around 6,000 horsepower, stretched about 32 meters, and with a full load, weighed over a million pounds. It was never meant to be pretty or fast. It was built for one purpose, move heavy trains over the Rocky Mountains without stopping people who lived near the tracks. Say you always knew when a big boy was coming. The sound was deep, slow, and heavy, almost like distant thunder. Kids would run outside just to watch it pass, and even adults stopped what they were doing to see it go by. Only a small number of big boys were ever made, and most were scrapped after diesel engines took over. But a few survived in museums, and recently one of them was restored back to full working condition. When it ran again for the first time in decades, rail fans lined the tracks for miles. Some people actually got emotional watching it move under its own power. Number 1. The Soviet Russian P-36 Victory Locomotive, or General The P-36 wasn't just another steam engine, it was the last great champion of passenger steam. These locomotives produced over 6,200 horsepower, enough to haul long express trains across Russia's brutal landscape through freezing winters, scorching summers, and everything in between. They weren't quiet, nor were they gentle. But they were built with almost absurd precision, massive boilers, wide fireboxes, and running gear designed to survive decades of punishment. Crews said the P-36 felt steady and confident, like a machine that wanted to keep going no matter the conditions. These locomotives marked the final peak of global steam power, the point where steam reached its absolute limit. The P-36 wasn't just a machine. It was steam's last victory lap before the diesel age arrived. So yes, steam locomotives powered countries, industries, and entire generations. Some shook the earth, some broke records, some became legends. If you want more deep dives into forgotten locomotives and record-breaking engines, 
Hit like, subscribe, and tell us what to cover next.